let's say that on a problem, on a test or something, you had the square root of 12 plus the square root of 27. Okay. Now, these are kind of, you can just see immediately they're different entities, and you, you just, you can't really add them up don't, uh, uh, without doing some work first. So don't fall into the trap of trying to add 12 to 27 and come up with something else under the radical. You, you can't add radicals like that. You have to do some simplification first. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. If we were to simplify this radical, just like we learned how to do in the previous section, how would we do it? Well, we know that 12 is 3 times 4. And we also know that 4 is 2 times 2. And everything is, uh, this is about as simple as we can get, so we're going to look for pairs below the dotted line. Of course, we have a nice pair here, okay, the 2. So we're going to take this 2, we're going to pull it out, and the 3 is by itself, so it stays in. So this reduces to 2 times the square root of 3. Everything we've done here is, is the kind of thing that we learned how to do in the previous section of the class. So let's, let's keep that right there. Se separately, let's go ahead and try to reduce this. 27 is 9 times 3, right? And 9 is just simply 3 times 3. And that's as simple as we can go. So we're going to start to look for pairs here. Of course, we've got a nice pair right there. So we're going to pull the 3 out, and we're going to say that the square root of 27 is equal to 3 times the square root of 3, because we have a lonely 3 here left over. There's nobody to pair up with 3. So it has to stay underneath the uh, radical. So we have reduced the problem from something that looks unfriendly and different to something that looks, believe it or not, it looks a little bit better. Because notice here, in the first term, I have 2 times the square root of 3. In the second term, I have 3 times the square root of 3. I'm going to tell you what the answer is, and then we're going to talk about why. This is going to equal 5 times the square root of 3. Okay? And let me explain really why that is. If you remember back to the first uh, DVD that I produced on algebra, when we learned how to just simplify uh, terms in an equation, if you have something like x plus 3x, what is the answer here? The answer is that this is equal to 4x. And the reason why is because here, you know, x is just a number. It's some, some quantity. x can be pencils, for instance. It's easier for you to think about it in terms of pencils, if, if you ask me. So here I have x number of pencils. Here I have 3 times x number of pencils. So I have 3 times as many pencils here on this side. So when I add them together, I've just added the number of pencils I have, which I really I don't know how many I have because it's a variable, but you have x units of something and 3x units of something. So when you add them together, you just get 4 times x units of something. Okay? x is the variable okay, in, in that expression there, or the unknown. Here, it's exactly the same. Here I have 2 units of a quantity that I'm going to call square root of 3. It just happens that square root of 3 is a number. You can put it in your calculator, and you can find that it is a number. Here I have three units of square root of three, which is just, again, some number. So here this term is common with this term. And that's why you can add the coefficients in the front and arrive at this. I have two units of square root of three, three units of square root of three. I add them up, I get five units of square root of three. It's exactly the same as this. Okay. So the bottom line, when you do these kinds of problems, what you're going to do is you're going to simplify.